an old lady got married to this 85-year-old bachelor. As he has never been with a woman before, he was obviously surprisingly active with the lovemaking. No matter where she went or what she was busy with, that was all he wanted to do. She decided to write to an advice column and ask for some advice. Here is what she wrote. Dear Editor, I have married an old bachelor and I think that I have made a big mistake. He just cannot keep his hands of me and wants to make love the whole time. He comes at me 24 hours a day when I'm having a shower, when I'm scrubbing the floor, before breakfast and after dinner. He is quite impossible and I don't know what to do. Please can you give me some advice? P.S. Please excuse the jerky handwriting. <laughs> An 85-year-old man married a 25-year-old woman. She insists they have two separate bedrooms so that he could relax and regain his strength after each time they made love. On the first night, the old man performed extremely well and then retired to his own bedroom. A few minutes passed and there was a knock at the door. He came in and the two had another wonderful session. This impressed the young bride very much. He had hardly left to go to his own bedroom when a few minutes later there was yet another knock at the door. Sure, enough the old fellow was at his best once more. The bride, now thoroughly satisfied with the old stallion, said, You know you are very, very good. I have been to bed with men less than half your age and they weren't nearly as good as you. How on earth do you manage? The old man replied, Do you mean I was here already? <laughs> this old man was sitting at the bus stop waiting for the bus. He had his walking cane with him and was constantly tapping it onto the ground to get the time by, waiting for the bus. A man with eight children joined him at the bus stop. The children were all different age and reminded the old man of the flumes of a church organ. He kept on tapping his cane on the ground in anticipation of the bus's arrival. Eventually the bus pulled in and the bus driver said to them, there are too many of you for the bus. The bus then drove off again. Patiently, the old man kept tapping his cane on the ground. As it irritated the father, he said, old man, you should put a piece of rubber on the tip of that thing. The old man replied, if you have put a piece of rubber on the tip of that thing, winking at the man's pants, we would have all be home already. <laughs> old people are not cold people. This 70-year-old lady went the doctor for a checkup. After the examination, the doctor said, Ma'am, I have either good news or bad news for you. You are pregnant. This is truly a medical wonder at 70 years, and I hope you and your husband will know how to deal with this. The doctor then proposes that the old lady phone her husband directly from his surgery to see how he will deal with this unexpected news. The old lady was left alone to phone her husband. After the phone rang for about a minute, as the old man was not so mobile anymore and was not hearing so well, he answered the phone. The old lady said, you old tiger, you once again did it, I am pregnant. The old man was quiet for a couple of seconds and then he slowly said, who's talking? This old man and his wife walk out of a shopping center to find a police officer writing out a ticket. He rushed off to the car and shouted to the officer, what the hell are you doing? The officer immediately starts to write another ticket for a crack in the windshield. Are you mad? The old man shouted. The officer immediately starts to write a ticket for the car's license that have expired. The old man was now angry and shouted, you have got nothing better to do with your time. Why don't you get a proper job? With this, another ticket was written. At that point, a bus pulled up, the old man said to the officer with a smile. You should have a nice day, officer, walked away and climbed onto the bus. And the poor guy whose car it was, never mind, because the bumper sticker read, I love Trump. <laughs> a man was trying out his new sports car when he went through a speed trap. He decided to put his foot down in an attempt to lose the traffic officer. 
A glance in his rearview mirror revealed his worst fears. The traffic officer was gaining on him. He decided to pull over. Within a second, the officer was standing next to him, ticket book in hand. Unless you have a very good story to tell me, said the officer. I will have to give you the biggest fine of your life. Well, officer, said the man. One of the officers at the traffic department ran off with my wife the other day. What has that got to do with your speeding like this? Asked the traffic officer. When I saw you approaching from the rear, said the offender, I thought you were that traffic officer bringing back my wife. <laughs> this husband was working on the roof of his home. The wife was in the shower. There was a knock at the door, and the husband shouted down to his wife to answer it. But I am in the shower, she protested. Well, I am on the roof, and I can't come down now. So, she quickly wrapped a bath towel around herself and went to answer the door. It was the neighbor who took one look at her and said, Tell you what, you unwrap that towel and give me a flash, and I'll give you $800. She thought about it, and as quick as a flash, opened the towel and wrapped herself up again. He handed her $800 and went off smiling. Later, the husband asked, who was at the door just now? It was the neighbor, she replied. Oh, he said, did he bring the $800 he owes me? <laughs> Growing old is inevitable. However, growing up is optional. <laughs> you know that you are getting old when happy hour is having an afternoon nap. <laughs> you know that you are getting old when getting lucky means being able to still find your car in a parking lot. <laughs> you know that you are getting old when you don't have to read history books because you still remember all the events. <laughs> you know that you are getting old when the candles on your cake cost much more than the birthday cake itself. <laughs> An elderly couple had lived in the flight path of the local aerodrome all their lives and never complained about the noise factor. A senior pilot heard of this and decided to take them for a flight as a way of showing appreciation. He called on them and asked whether they had ever flown before and was surprised to hear they had not. He took them to the airport and helped them into the back of a small plane and said to them, now you don't have to say a word, just sit back and enjoy the flight. They took off and the pilot decided to do a few aerobatics to make it more interesting for them. After a half an hour of flight, he landed the plane again, opened the door at the back, and asked, Well, did you enjoy the flight? The old man replied, Yes, indeed. I nearly let out a yell, though, when my wife fell out, but I... <laughs> this doctor and his wife had an argument one morning prior to the doctor leaving for his surgery. Just as the doctor left the front door of his house, he shouted to his wife, and by the way, you mean nothing in bed to me. Later that morning, the doctor felt very bad about the comment he shouted to his wife and decided to phone her to apologize for his behavior that morning. As the phone just kept ringing, he got very concerned, but eventually the wife answered the phone being very out of breath. Why did you take so long to answer the phone and why are you so out of breath? The doctor asked. I was thinking about that comment I made this morning and wanted to phone you. The wife responded, following your comment to me this morning, I thought it a good idea to get a second opinion to your comment. <laughs> a businessman went into a pub, looking as miserable as can be after a long day at the office, sat down at the bar and ordered a double scotch on the rocks. After he finished the drink, he peeked inside his pocket with a big frown on his face, ordered the barman to bring him another double scotch. After he finished that one, he again peeked inside his shirt pocket 
Again, he has that frown look on his face and with a huge sigh ordered the barman to bring him another double scotch. Finally, the barman said, Look, buddy, I'll bring you drinks all night long, but you've got to tell me why you keep peering into your shirt pocket before you order. The customer replied, I'm looking at a photo of my wife that I keep in my pocket. When she starts to look good, then I know it's time to go home.